We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Vì thứ pháp hội cấp nhà thiếp chúng sanh Tình chuyến diệu pháo luân nhau đau ngã mùng Như há liệu sanh thỏa tư ly khổ Tốt chương vô sân Amit to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Nam mô sa đan thô sư chê đô dê ơ la hơ đi sa miao san pu tô xê Nam mô ta gác tha tu ya ga ya a la ha de ta miu tham bồ đà thoa The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Tu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa bai chen Wan che nan zao yu O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master, Sixth Patriarch, Great Master Shenhua, all good monks and nuns, and all good knowing advisors of me, to follow. Hello, everyone. Today is the 23rd of March, 2024. We're here in Wei Temple to uh, discuss the last section of the sixth um, chapter of the Sixth Patriarch Sutra. It's on repentance and reform. We're on slide 176. Thank you all for joining us. Let's jump right into it. Uh, sutra text. Good knowing advisors, the Dharma body of the Buddha is basically complete. See your own nature in every thought is to see the own nature in every thought is the reward body of the Buddha. 善知识, 法身本具, 念念自信自见, okay, 177. So he's been talking about, uh, in the context is that he's been talking about taking refuge with triple jewel, which is, uh, means taking refuge with the Buddha is one of the three jewels. And the Buddha itself has actually had three bodies, the, uh, the Dharma body, the reward body, and the transformation body. He uses those three bodies to do his work. The Dharma body is basically the universe. It's nothing it doesn't have. The reward body is a humongous, humongous body that only used for teaching the bodhisattvas. And finally, the transformation bodies are used to teaching low-level people like us, low lives, if you will. Okay, so Buddha is a very adaptable, depending on 
uh, what he needs to do, he uses the three different types of Buddha, uh, bodies, sorry. And the six bay track says, when you take refuge with the Buddha, actually you're taking refuge with your Buddhas of your self nature, okay? And this, that Buddha of yours actually also is the three bodies, okay? The same thing as all Buddhas. And so in slide 177, uh, the Dharma body of the Buddha is basically complete, okay? Is fundamentally complete. What does it mean that the Dharma body of the Buddha is fundamentally complete? Meaning that this Buddha here has everything. All the Tesla stocks, NVIDIA stocks, he has everything. So it's very hard to get him impressed with your wealth. Yeah? Does it make sense? That's the nature of blessings. He says his blessings are complete, fundamentally complete. He has everything in this universe because it's his body. All right? So do you find him, do you think he's covets a red car? Retirement? A big temple? No, that's nothing. Okay? You're such small thinker. I mean, I'm such a small thinker, excuse me. <laughs> okay, it's because I lost sight of my Dharma body. Okay? This Dharma body of ours, we all have it. We just don't know how to use it, to access it. That's all. Okay? So, if we keep on coveting things and have desires for our girlfriend, for example, how far are we from this Dharma body of the Buddha? So far away. See that? So we're doing things to keep on erecting walls between us and our Dharma body by our own desires. Yeah? You know, interesting how we dig a, a, a hole for ourselves and get deeper and deeper. You know, one more red car you want, you know, the hole gets deeper. Okay? Mm. And so, that's why this morning someone asked me, I feel so lonely. My answer is, so do I. <laughs> Again, because I lost track of my Dharma body. Because if I am connected with my Dharma body that I supposedly have, how many girlfriends do I have? Hey, this is serious talk, you Catholic. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes? How many girlfriends do I have? Countless. Countless, thank you. <laughs> Do you get it? What happened to the man who asked a question? He disappeared. He's looking for a woman. <laughs> Jung, what happened to that man? What did you do to him? <laughs> and that woman who's supposed to go to bow, huh? They, it's appeared just like that. <laughs> what is this? I feel so used. <laughs> Speak. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful, Master. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, the, the man who uh, asked about uh, he feel lonely, he's uh, behind you. The uh, the sound system in the back. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I take it back. <laughs> and the woman. <laughs> and the woman, she left after lunch. So. Left after lunch. <laughs> okay, she's too busy bowing. 
<laughs> okay, you see that? Uh, so that's why, that's why, uh, that's why uh, we, we, we are a lot richer than we realize. And if we keep on harboring uh, these desires, we are further and further away from our Buddha nature, from our Dharma body. That's the meaning of this teaching. Next, to see your own nature in every thought is the reward body of the Buddha. It's nothing for you to understand. Okay, don't ask me, huh? What do you mean? Okay, because my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes, the nice thing about learning the Buddha Dharma is that you can take the words of these great sages uh, uh, at face value. Don't have to understand. Be grateful that he, they feel the Dima is worthy enough to teach us. Okay? So he says, hmm, if you see your own nature, are you seeing your own nature? In every thought? Then why should I explain to you? Okay? So this instruction is for the Bodhisattvas. That's why don't try to understand your girlfriend. <laughs> Sorry, I mean your boyfriend. <laughs> Same thing. Okay? Got that? Okay. So, uh, if you are enlightened, mm. Then, if you are seeing your own nature in every thought, okay, that is the reward body, your reward body. Don't look at me like that. I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm just repeating what he said. I'm innocent. I don't know it. I don't understand it, but I believe him. Does it make sense to you? If you keep on doing this, instead of looking at your own girlfriend, then you see your reward body. Believe. Who laughed again? Shoot him. Questions? Okay. No questions? All right. 178. When the reward body thinks and calculates, it is a transformation body of the Buddha. Awaken and cultivate by your own efforts the merit and virtue of your self nature that is truly taking refuge. <laughs> Okay. Remember the context is that when you take refuge with triple jewel, this is what we teach you to do. Something very beneficial for you, extremely beneficial for you, uh, if you get to do it. And he explains to us the nature of this Dharma that was transmitted to the Buddhists. And most of the Buddhists don't understand this. Okay, uh, and and um, so this is incre incredibly insightful. He says, "Okay, I talk to you about the Dharma body, okay, of the Buddhas, and then next level the reward body of the Buddhas, which is for Bodhisattvas, okay. Dharma body you don't understand, we don't understand. Reward body Bodhisattvas understand, okay. The Dharma body only Buddhas would be able to understand." what we're talking about. Reward bodies only bodhisattvas would be able to understand, not all of them, as a matter of fact. And then thirdly, the transform transformation bodies. What are they? Okay. It says, when the reward body thinks and calculates, it is a transformation body of the Buddha. Meaning what? 
It says right there, when the reward body thinks and calculates. Meaning what? The transformation body of the Buddhas originates from where? Hmm? The reward body. Is that clear? Okay. So what happened is this. You have a Dharma body of the Buddha, which is everything. Okay. All the gold, all the uh, cryptocurrencies and so forth, all the, uh, what, what's so funny? All the fancy sports cars. Sorry, uh, just an obsession. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, so the Dharma body has everything. And it, to do his work, to, be, to enable uh, the bodhisattvas to have something to connect with, they have something called the reward body. Okay? And from there, okay, uh, there, that's to work with bodhisattvas. And for, at that level, in order to go a lower level, then you start from reward body and make transformation bodies. Is that clear? So there is a hierarchy here. There is a step by step process. Buddhas, in order to save bodhisattvas, use reward bodies. And this is for the bodhisattvas. And bodhisattvas, when they get to a certain level, they have their own reward bodies. And then they realize that for them to save living beings, low lives like us, then they use transformation bodies. Very scientific. All right? Hmm. So how does the reward body create the transformation body? It creates by thinking and calculating. Isn't that interesting? This is a state secret, folks. That's amazing, and this incredibly insightful wisdom are there for free. This is, you know, like AI is nowhere near the value of this type of secrets. You want to create robots and better than robots, better than uh, what's the, the, those, uh, those AI-driven uh, things. Uh, Elon has one recently. Not Tesla. Tesla is no one. That's, that's, that's the pits. He, he has some sort of AI-driven robot, humanoid. You guys don't follow the rules? No wonder I feel so lonely. <laughs> okay? So, this transformation body is advanced technology of the Buddha. This, you know, AI uh, that we, the, we, that's being lauded is nowhere near the kind of intelligence because this kind of transformation body is like us. These marvel things where they transform into human beings, into animals, into ghosts, into gods, into you name it. And that's called transformation body. Isn't that cool? The Buddha is a chameleon. How he needs to? He becomes a spider. He becomes a heinous hyena or a loving mother, or a beautiful, loving girlfriend. You heard the stories, don't you? And that Master Shiho talked about, uh, in China, uh, there's a village, uh, a, a village uh, of fishermen, and they're very, they excel at fishing. This is, I read this a long, long time ago, so if you forgive me if I don't remember all the details. This is you're talking about a quarter of a century ago. Could be 40 years ago. Wait, I'm dating myself. Maybe a little bit less. <laughs> okay. It's not that funny. 
Okay, so, uh, so this fisherman village here, they refuse to believe in Buddhism. They said, no, we are fishermen. We don't believe in Buddha thing. We have our own lifestyle, our own beliefs. Forget Buddhas. So the one problem with fishermen's village, apple, LA apple, is what? No, never mind. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> They're all men. Is that the same version we, we, you read? It's all men. Yes, in the back. Master, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> in China, where else? You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> okay, so the old men, the old great fishermen, they say, we are men. We don't believe in this Buddhist thing. Okay? So one day, out of the blue, on the beach, walked a... <laughs> Beautiful maiden. And all the men, oh, oh woman, woman. <laughs> and they all chase after her. And the woman says, too many of you. <laughs> I can only love one person. So I said, me, 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 all the men, me, 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 me. They are all going like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're all spreading the feathers like a peacock, you know. They wouldn't say, oh, it's so hard for me to choose among so, such, a, such, such, a, such a, 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 a models of masculinity. <laughs> and she says, what to do, what to do, what to do? <laughs> So Apple, continue. Well, then um, in order to help me pick, then let's see maybe who can recite the Great Compassion Mantra. There you go. Ah, so she started said, you know what? Um, let's have some tests to find the most able and most qualified men as husband for me. So she started asking them, um, can you memorize the six principles? <laughs> I mean, oh yeah? They said, no problem. So the whole village memorized. They said, wow, this is too easy. <laughs> and so she says, what about uh, the rebirth mantra? And believe it or not, many men villagers could not memorize it. So that good chunk of them, you know, failed. And so she kept on asking them to memorize Buddhist stuff, mantras, texts, and so forth. So as you see, they get weeded out, weeded out, weeded out, weeded out, until finally there are only two men left. Okay, so she says, you are such beautiful specimen of manhood. <laughs> you must be doing stair masters every day. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, and, and she says, I, you know, Either one of you would be an ideal husband for me. However, I can only choose one. So I choose the first one who can memorize the Vashra Sutra. And they both ran away immediately. <laughs> Check online on the online version. <laughs> and they memorize it. And one man memorized it, 
and he was declared winner and husband of the woman. Okay? So, the whole village got together. They are, they are good losers. Okay? They're not sore losers at all, like some people. <laughs> okay? Uh, they're Buddhists. By that time, they all understand Buddhism now. They believe in Buddhism. Okay? So they said, Buddhists are not, are not sore losers. Okay? So they got together, celebrated the marriage, and the, the marriage, beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Lots of fish. I mean, lots of vegetarian fish. <laughs> and um, they got married, exchanged rings and wedding vows and so forth. Okay? For, for sicker, and for richer and poorer, for in health and sickness and that, that, that kind of thing. And then they, after the ceremony, uh, uh, the beautiful, beautiful lady uh, was walking to the husband's house and she suddenly tripped and fell and died. <laughs> and died. <laughs> All that for nothing. <laughs> That's so Buddhist. You see that? We Buddhists do a lot of good things and for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't advise Catholics to follow our path. It's just too much. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so that's, uh, that's what, uh, uh, what uh, how did we go with this story? You remember? Okay, so the point here is that the woman there actually is one in Bodhisattva who transformed herself into the beautiful maiden. So that's transformation body, if you will. You know, that's what Buddhas and Bodhisattvas do in order to save us, transform, have all sorts of transformations. They can transform to a woman, to a man, to a dog, to a cat, and so forth to Catholics, to, you know. All right? Mm -hmm. So how does the transformation take place? This is another Buddhist secret, okay? Daniel, please plug your ears, it's not for you. Through Su Liang, through Thinking or focusing. Su he is actually Su he is actually focusing, not thinking, focusing. Fixating. Is that clear? Okay? It's not thinking. The one about you can say think because we don't we I revealing you the Buddhist secret here, but so that in the future you make your own transformation bodies. Okay? And you say, Oh, I learned from Master Yung Hoa. Okay, and then you leave a little flower on my tombstone. <laughs> and people are sleeping, and I thought I'm saying something important. Apparently not. <laughs> State secrets that typically people kill for. It's okay. <laughs> so trying sometimes being a monk. Anyway, so Su is actually fixating, not just thinking. You fixate your thoughts, okay? And that's where, where your time training comes in, your meditation tra training comes in. You fixate your thought. And calculating is to evaluate, okay? So, why so you create? Evaluate means when I create, how tall is it, how short it is, how big it is, and so forth. That's why liang, liang is to calculate, to, to figure out the final details.
This is a state secret. Okay, online people, cut this out, only subscription model. <laughs> no Catholics. Isn't that beautiful? This is a secret. When it's time for you to make transformation bodies, this is what you do. Su Liang. Whoa, how excited she is now. Look at number one. She, look how excited she looks. One. Hey. <laughs> they, they, they're discussing. I said, you go first. I said, no, no, you go. You go Su Liang first. Oh, my God. Yeah, go ahead. So, for example, Master, about transformation body for Guan Yin Bodhisattva, the yeah. beautiful maiden. Yeah. So, before she um, made that transformation body, uh -huh. she calculated to be beautiful. That's why she came out as, you know, a beautiful transformation No, honey, body. You're, not, you're not that good at it yet. Okay, let me explain it to you. Okay? Okay. When one Yin Bodhisattva wanted that to appear as a maiden in that village full of male men, okay, what did she do? I don't know her, but this is, if I were her, I would do this. I would say, Su is that I will fixate myself and say, I want to create a woman. Okay, a woman. That su is that woman, 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 woman. Got that? Catholic is not for you. Okay. Uh, woman, woman, woman. So this is Chan. You see how Chan it is? Okay. Woman, woman, woman. The pure line people say Amitabo, Amitabo, same thing, similar technology. When the pure line people, Amitabo, 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 we hear. One year actually, woman, 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 woman. That's su, su liang. Okay? So su is right here. It's su here. The Chinese is very precise. It's beautiful. The su is, it says, woman, woman, woman. Liang is that, they said, as the shape is being, the shape is taking place, the liang comes into play. As it, you know, as it's becoming, it's taking shape, and she said, and Guan Yin begins to think, you know, these men are sort of five five. The fishermen, China, why are you laughing? It's true. Years ago, they're all about five five. Okay, so he says. The Liang says, if I have a woman about 5'8", it won't look good. Because that's why the Liang says, okay, man is 5'5", five five, therefore I should go to, what, I don't know. 5'3", huh? there you go, 5'3", thank you very much. Hmm? You see that? Liang, we are together creating this beautiful maiden. Liang is to... to to now molding it, okay? Okay, and then she says, what about uh, hair? What color? See, liang, see? Is, is, is to, to calculate. They say, so what kind of hair color? Clearly dark. It's, this looks funny to have a blonde looking hair on, you know, on, 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 on um, uh, most blondes are short anyway. Play along. <laughs> okay, so the Liang, you see how beautiful it is? He says, I want this woman, so I want a woman, and Liang is, 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 is molding it, shaping it. Yeah, continuing. And who cares about robotics and, and all those AI crap? You see? See how advanced we are in, in Buddhism? We're way beyond AI, folks. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> Control yourself. <laughs> Go on. So this transfer transformation body, is it like uh, she's like an AI of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva? A real person. Not avatar? No. Real. Does she think? No avatar. That, that's that's, <laughs> that's uh, Hollywood technology. This is Buddhist technology, dear. No way. We don't do avatars. They're real. But does They're real, this... as real as you. You bet. I tell you that uh, later, you see. I know because, because, because I've seen those. Just one more question, Master. Okay. Does this young maiden know she is a Guan Yin Bodhisattva, for example? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, she, whether she knows or not, doesn't matter. Her job is not to know. Her job is to convert the entire village into Buddhists. Yes, one. This may seem now, everyone's awake except for one person. <laughs> this may seem like a crazy question, but don't you think she wondered why she was doing this? It's one Yin Bodhisattva. Well, I know that, but you... Oh, well, maybe she does know. She, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing? Yes. Okay. Don't worry. One you knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> Believe. <laughs> don't don't have, have no doubts. Okay? My gosh. Anyone else? Isn't it cool? This is from the sixth page track. He reviews you glimpses of the... Buddhist spiritual penetrations. That's how powerful they are. Put it down. <laughs> I told you this is not only for the Buddhists, not for the Catholics. Another question. <laughs> So, Master, you mentioned about there are people coming, uh, coming back from Pure Land uh, with the Amitofo's uh, power. Are they coming in transfer transformation body, or are they? What are they? Transformation bodies, exactly. So, for example, you know, uh, let's say. And they, they need to send back someone and they manifest as, you know, like someone looks like Diana <laughs> and so forth. Just like that. Okay, so they go through that process of birth and so on. <laughs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. Go, 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 it's okay. Hmm. But they don't know why they're here for. No, when you're born, you start over. But because of the nature of the blessings from the pure land, they are being guided. They're scripted. It's all scripted. Okay? It's all scripted because Amitabha would not leave anything to chances. Nothing. That's what happens. This is the real advantage of going to the pure land. Once you go there, Amitabha says, I'll take care of you until you become a Buddha. Here, no one takes care of you. <laughs> okay? No one. You're on your own. Over there, Amitabha Buddha makes a commitment to you. He says, you're here with me. I will be with you. I watch over you until you become a Buddha. You're no longer alone. And for, for the Catholic's reference, the Amitabha Guru says, I will take care of you until you are just like me. Isn't that cool? Wouldn't you like to have that? Huh? Amitama Buddha on your side? 
watching over you. Huh? There you go. Go to the pure land. What are you doing here? JMT. Yeah, you have to die first. Yeah. <laughs> 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 네, 어, 2주 전에 마스터께서 정토 범문 하셨을 때 그때 프란시스가 질문을 했었는데 정토에서 왔다고 해서 어, 반드시 정토로 복귀한다는 개런티는 없다라고 들었던 것 같은데 한번 끊을까요, 상우스님? Master, two weeks ago in the Pure Land Dharma talk, Francis asked a question. Uh, when they come from the Pure Land, we, they cannot be guaranteed to go back to pure land. 뭐라고 말씀하셨냐면 이제 마스터 아니 뭐지? 그러니까 아미타 부처님이 신부름으로 다시 사바 세계 왔었어도 그 사람의 사바 세계 행적에 따라서 반드시 정토로 복귀한다는 개런티가 없다고 하셨는데 한번 끊을까요, 상우스님 더? Even though Amita Buddha sent them. Um, because of their, what they, depending on what they did in the Saha world, um, they cannot get guaranteed to go back to pure land. Who says so? You said so. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Can I take it back? <laughs> go on. Boy, am I in trouble? <laughs> Continue. 질문은 네, 그러니까 첫 번째 질문은 화신인데 왜 정토로 복귀할 수 없다고 하셨는지 그게 궁금했고 두 번째는 어 솔직히 힘들게 수행을 해서 정토로 갔는데 다시 사바 세계로 돌아와야 된다는 게좀 싫거든요. 그래서 이 아미타 부처님의 신부름할 거부권이 있는 건지 그게 두 가지가 궁금했어요. So I have two questions. Uh, they are transmission, transformation body, but why can they go back to pure land? The second question, uh, we practice very hard and we went there, we go to pure land. And so I don't want to go back to Saha world. So can I say no to Amitabha Buddha? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first question, right? Never mind about the second question. This first question alone, okay, you're on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> okay? You go to Pure Land, you listen to Amitabha Buddha. You don't say, can I not listen to you, Buddha? That's in the Saha world. Here, Amitabha Buddha is not the same as your husband. Your husband says, he said, no, I disagree, okay? It doesn't work like that in the pure land. In the pure land, whatever he tells you, you should do. Because it's for your own good. You are not smart enough to know what's good for you. You go to the pure land, yeah. You know that everything Amitabha tells you is for your own good. It's that simple. Here we have doubts, over there is no such a thing. Okay? So she's one of those who are not guaranteed to go to the pure land. <laughs> Hmm? Okay, question number two. That's a warning. You better listen. And second question. I'm trying to soften the blow. <laughs> so they are transformation body, but why can, why sometimes they cannot go to pure land? There's so many reasons. For example, 
I give an example, it's just, it's not true. I just give an example. Let's say Jumi is, was originally from the Pure Land. Possible. We don't know that, but it's possible. No, she says no. <laughs> Suppose you're from the Pure Land. How do you know you're not? Remember, when you're born, you forget. It resets. It's, it's the karma that reshapes your, your life again, okay? Beyond your control. So that's a you from the Pure Land. And then you, you, you live and you get married and then you came to Jewel Mountain Temple and you practice Jewel Mountain Temple and then on March uh, 23, 2024, no, over there right now is Sunday. Tomorrow already. So on Sunday in Korea time, Sunday, uh, March 24, 2024, you attend a class of Master Yong Hua. And you says, you know, if I disagree with the Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, can I not listen to him? How do you think Amitabha Buddha feels about it? He probably says, I, I told yeah, he says, she doesn't like me. Right? What? What did she say? Amitabha, Amitabha Buddha might not like me. There you go. So Amitabha Buddha says, you know what? She doesn't really like me at all. She could stay in the Saha world. So Amitama Buddha reserved the right to change his mind. <laughs> Ask the old abbot, does he agree? I hear about. Hôm trước thầy có nói là và thượng tiên quá đó là trở về từ cõi cực lạc để giúp chúng sinh. Thì chúng ta thấy cái đời của Thượng Tiên Quá đó. Thượng nói Thầy nói ngày chết ngày còn có ba ba mấy bốn chục ký thôi Ốm không còn gì hết Rồi một lần Thầy giảng là Phật làm cái gì Phật là luôn luôn giúp chúng sanh không ngừng nghỉ Cho nên chúng ta trở lại từ cõi trình độ đó Để giúp chúng sanh và tạo công đức Thầy đủ rồi chúng ta thành Phật chứ ở trên cực lạc làm cái gì nên đó để sướng nó giúp cho những người khổ ở đây tạm thời họ đi lên đó thôi Rồi nhận cái lực của Phật Di Đà rồi thì trở xuống đây Để mà thực tập để thành Phật Chứ không phải thành Phật rồi mình ngồi đó rồi người ta cúng dường rồi mình Ta lấy lại mình rồi vậy là không Làm Phật là phải giúp chúng sanh không ngừng nghỉ Nên khi cô trở lại đây Cô phải làm những chuyện như Hòa Thượng Tiến Quá làm như vậy đó Để tạo công đức Khi nào đủ hết trong một trăm phần trăm rồi cô thành Phật sao Yeah, có lần thầy cũng giảng là cõi này có bà này và tịnh độ là hai phật hợp tác với nhau để mà huấn luyện để làm người ta cho người ta tốt hơn chứ không phải chỗ nào tốt mà chỗ nào tránh mà mình muốn lên bên kia để mình trốn được xin hết Amitofo, Master, um, last time you explained about the life story of Venerable Xinhua, he came from uh, Western Place, Pure Land. His job here is to save living beings. And uh, you also say that uh, toward the end of his life, he only weighed around 30 to 40 kilograms. Um, so um, all his entire life, is that to save living being. So what is the Buddha job 
What did he do? He also saved living being always, nonstop. And therefore, when we think that we come back to this Saha world is to do Buddha work, is to save living being, we have to help others save them work nonstop. And therefore, Jumi, when you come back here, you are doing this kind of work as well. Gradually, you will um, accumulate enough merit and virtue, and then you will become a Buddha. But why would you want it to just to stay in the pure land so that people worship you or just not doing nothing at all? Um, you as also master mentioned that uh, here, Saha world and Western bliss pure land, our two Buddhas work together in conjunction. They cooperate with each other to optimize the best way to save living being. So that's why you don't just go into uh, the pure land to avoid suffering. That's all. But let me be specific. Is it possible, Venu Abbot, that Amitabha, after he heard Jumi's talk today, that he would call Shakyamuni, Shakyamuni Buddha and say, you know what, I have, an, I have a, a girl there with you. Can you keep her a little bit longer for me? It's possible. Yes or no? Remember, you in Korea. Ah, yes. Hàn Quốc is in Korea. That's the thing. Chưa Phật làm con đâu có biết. He's so political. <laughs> I remind him, you are in Korea now. Be careful. <laughs> All alone in Korea. Like the Catholic, all alone among the Buddhists. <laughs> so, Jumi, you got that? It's, uh, the, 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 the answer is that, yes, you get back to the Pure Land eventually, but uh, there might be a delay. Okay? So it's like you change the flight a few million years. <laughs> uh, yeah, one. Thank you, Master. We have a uh, question from Empty Mirror. Alex asks, Amitafo Master, how is understanding the causes of transformation body related to refuge? It has to do with when you take refuge to the Buddha, that's what they are. Okay? And he explains to you what those Buddhas are so that you understand that you're actually taking refuge with no one outside of yourself, but your own Buddhas of your self-nature. And that's how they come into play. That's how wonderful your self-nature is, is capable of all those things. Anyone else? Okay, next. Awaken and cultivate by your own efforts the merit and virtue of your self-nature. That is truly taking refuge. See, that's the answer to Alex's question. Awaken. No, actually translation should be uh, you should hmm, awaken yourself and cultivate yourself. Okay? To wu, to xiu. You have to awaken yourself. Cultivate yourself. The, the Chinese is very precise. You have to awaken yourself because no one else will awaken for you. 
You have to cultivate yourself because that's how. That's how it works. You have to cultivate, cultivate yourself. Okay? And to sing Gunta and uh, nurture uh, your self nature, merit, and virtue. That is true taking refuge. All we can do for you, all I can do for you, is provide an environment. But you have to cultivate yourself. You have to awaken yourself. And you have to nurture your self-nature, merit, and virtue. Because only, you are the only one who can do it. This is the Buddha's wisdom. Don't depend, don't expect someone else to do it for you. Yes, JMT. A chút xíu là hồi nãy cô với mày có hỏi là lên trên tận độ rồi không có muốn xuống nữa. Thì à, có mới có anh Alex mới hỏi là tại sao phải quá thân phải làm cái chuyện đó. Thì trở lại cái chung á, nãy thầy cũng có nói là cái cô này có thể bị chậm lên địch lạc đó, tại vì cái tánh là muốn ở trên đó. Không có muốn giúp chúng sanh. Thì tóm tắt lại đó, chúng ta nhớ là cái phẩm 11 trong kinh Quan Nghiêm á À, cái phẩm phát bồ đề tâm mà trong tịnh độ cũng vậy muốn lên tịnh độ là phải phát bồ đề tâm chứ không phải lên đó là chạy trốn cái khổ ở đây cái người phát bồ đề tâm rất là chắc chắn dẫn sanh và dễ dẫn sanh phát bồ đề tâm là gì là chúng sanh vô biên thể nguyện độ Phật đạo vô thượng thể nguyện thành thì cái đó là cái gốc rễ hết tất cả những gì mà quá thân cái gì mà làm ở đây đó, để thành phật đó nó mở ra hết tất cả những cái gì mà giáng sanh hay là trở lại độ chúng sanh để thành Phật. Chỉ vậy thôi. Cái người hành giả phải phát Bồ Đề Tâm. Ở cái cốt lõi trong cái sự tu hành. Bởi cho nên Kinh Quang Nghiêm Phẩm 11 là nói về cái Phẩm Phát Bồ Đề Tâm thôi. Không đức Phát Bồ Đề Tâm thế nào. Mình trong cái tánh không đó, mình activate nó về cái, cái Bồ Đề Tâm thì nó nói tất cả nó dọn ra sẵn cho mình hết. Chư Phật người phương theo cái đó mà sắp xếp cho mình để mình hoàn thành cái lời thầy đó. Xin hết. Um, so, uh, last time Chumi asked her question that uh, she wanted to be born in Western Bliss Pure Land, but she doesn't want to come back. And also, Alex asked about how this transformation body can relate to the refuge. Um, so that thing, it may be to me, could have been delayed, could have been slower, because uh, she just only wanted for herself. She doesn't want to come back to safe living being in general. Uh, in chapter 11 of Flower Adornment Sutra, they talk about the merit and virtue of the first bring forth of initial resolve. Um, Venerable Abbot explained as to bring forth the body mind. So bring forth the body mind is just in, it is a saying that living beings are infinite, I vow to save them all. Uh, the Buddha ways is uh, unsurpassed, I vow to accomplish it. So therefore, these two vows open up to everything. This is the core of your cultivation. The merit and virtue uh, you create by bringing forth of this body-mind will help you fasten the way for you. And also, the Buddha and the Bodhisattva will, uh, will actually help that, help you make your vow, bring your vow to accomplishment. Okay, back to slide 179. So in summary, 
When you take refuge, as the sixth patriarch teaches in this sutra, in this chapter of, on repentance and reform, is that he went through all that to tell us, to remind us. When you take refuge to the Buddha, you take refuge to the Triple Jewel, okay? Do not be like ordinary people, where is it, now I'm a Buddhist, now take care of me, okay? Now it's all in your hands. He actually says, what the meaning of us teaching you take, to take refuge, a triple jewel, is that you must cultivate and enlighten yourself. The reason that we tolerate people thinking when they take refuge and you know, they think they can get a free ride and so forth is because it's for beginners. They don't understand, okay? But eventually, when they have enough blessings and wisdom, they will be able to receive this teaching from the sixth patriarch. It says, when you take refuge, remember, you must cultivate and you must enlighten yourself. That's all. No one can do it for you. Next, 180. The skin and flesh of the physical body are like an inn to which you cannot say that's where one can take refuge. Simply awaken to the three bodies as a self-nature and you will understand the self-nature of Buddha. Okay. 181, it says the body, physical body of yours, okay, that's made up, made up of skin and flesh, are like an inn. You know, that's you stay, meaning you stay there temporarily, it's not forever. And therefore, it's a temp because it's a temporary stay, therefore you cannot consider it as your own refuge. Okay, so what you can, what can you uh, count on? The three bodies of your self-nature that is permanent. And uh, you awaken to your own self-nature and will understand uh, the real Buddha in you. All right, that's all. 182, I have a verse without marks. If you can recite and uphold it, it will wipe away accumulated aeons of confusion and offenses as soon as the words are spoken. Okay, one eighty-three. I have a markless verse, a verse without marks. When he says a verse without marks, meaning that what? Mahayana concept. Only in Mahayana people talk about marks and marklessness. Okay, yes, one. Master, I think it. Might it mean um, that he has the verse with no words? The verse with no words? Then how can there be a verse? Shouldn't that be no verse? It is a verse, but that has no marks. What does it mean, no marks? A verse that has no marks. How can a verse have no marks? See, I'm glad I asked the question. I was about to skip on this. Because you know, say, oh, of course, no marks. That's my yana thing. What's a verse that has no marks? You know, interesting, you non mayana people, you don't even know what we're talking about. Yes, one. It's a verse from an enlightened being. A verse from enlightened being. Why don't we just say a verse from me? 
Why does he have to say a verse without marks? Anyone else? I'm testing your Mahayana level. Go forest. If you cannot an answer this, then you are Hinayana or lower. <laughs> Much pressure, Master. Uh, it's, a, it's a verse that uh, we should not be attached to. The words we should not be attached to, we just listen to it. Then he can say, if you should recite and uphold it, then shouldn't we be attached to it? Make up your mind. That's... Yeah, that's what I said, right? Does it make sense, right? Not even to Chinese people like you, from a Chinese patriarch. It's, uh, we, we just, uh, we just uh, listen to it. But the, uh, if you listen to it, how can you recite and uphold it? Come on, speak quickly. The words we can, uh, the, the, the words can only express so much. So it's, um, yeah. It's, it's like what Master said yesterday about the... Don't quote me. This is the sixth patriarch. <laughs> we listen it and then we have to throw it out too. So you want a cheesecake and you want to eat it too. Okay. Next. Korea people, let me see your Mahayana understanding, your Mahayana wisdom. JC. Thank you. Using this uh, markless verse, we can enter markless state. What? From this verse, we can enter markless state. Vatra state state? Mar markless. Oh, it sounds like... Wagyu steak. <laughs> Good guess. Okay. Uh, anyone else in Korea, in k -Land, show me your true Mahayana colors. I'm challenging you. I mean, you've been studying the Dharma with me for a long time now. Show me your Mahayana colors. JMT. Thầy có phải bài kệ mà tự tánh chúng sanh thầy nguyện độ, tự tánh phiền não thầy nguyện đoạn, tự tánh pháp môn vô lượng học Phật thầy hoàn học Phật đạo, tự tánh Phật đạo thầy nguyện thành. Phải đó bài kệ vô tứ. Master, so there's a verse which say that uh, Living beings of the self nature, I vow to cross over. Um, the affliction of the self nature, I vow to uh, cut them off. Um, the infinite Dharma door of the self nature, I vow to learn them all. And the Buddha of the self nature, I vow to accomplish that. Um, are those verse is the selfless. No, sorry, the markless verse. It's not the same verse. Anyone else in K-Land? Show me your Mahayana colors, your Mahayana roots. Yes, DTT. So I, I guess that the um, verse that help you uh, detach all of your kind of detachment, attachment. And why do you have to resign and uphold it? Because that, that will help you to, uh, to detach from your attachment so that will resign and uphold it. <laughs> Aren't you answering yourself? <laughs> Anyone else? 
I'm, I have to recite and uphold it so that I can unrecite and up and unuphold it. <laughs> yes, one. Very original. The Vietnamese is very crafty. You know, they, you know, they say, okay, I have it. I want a cheesecake. I want to eat it too. Um, I, have, um, I have some um, um, answers here for you. Empty Mirror says, it doesn't have any scheming or intention behind it. It reveals the truth only. Isn't that Marx? Number two. Dang says, does it mean we do not try to understand the verse, just accept it? So your children, number three. Emily says, without thought, just recite, don't think about it. That's not Marx, that's thoughts. That would be, who would have said, I have verse without thoughts. Go forest. I think you're going to all score bagels, all of you. I'm with the poor master. Uh, the, um, Bagel. Okay, next. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the Buddha way is, uh, is uh, no mark. So the, the um, markless verse is uh, you follow the instruction, you will, you will uh, success it. That, that mainly that follow instruction. You what? You follow instruction and what? Uh, and then you will then you will re realize it. Realize what? Uh, Specific Buddha. lottery ticket. Become Buddha. Yeah. Then why is it without marks? We, why do we say I have a verse? Recite and uphold it. Yeah. So it's similar to that. What means similar to that? <laughs> the Vietnamese is too crafty for me. <laughs> I want to answer yes or no, black and white. Don't say it's, it's like gray. Exactly. You know what I mean. You know, like he says, you know what I mean, Master. <laughs> it's like that, you know? The verse you recite and, and, and do it, then, then that's it. That's it? <laughs> then that verse has marks. That's what you're talking about. A verse that has marks. He says a verse has no marks. But when, when you're skillful, then it uh, doesn't have any mark that um, people don't see it. Like uh, you, you are so skillful to uphold precepts, so it's like no uphold anything. Go back to Denmark. Yes, eight. <laughs> He saw through the marks. He who? He who saw through the Who's he? Are we talking about God? We're talking about what? The, the Denmark guy there in the Gold Forest? And, and, who? And the Chinese says, I. Whoever I is, he saw through the marks of the verse. Wu Yo. Yi Wu Xiang Song. This is for me. Wu is me. I give it to you. Wu here means it's me. It's not the Buddha's. It's not someone else's me. My own creation. My own, my own heart. Because I care for you. Therefore, I give you these instructions. That's what Wu. I try it's not something you can understand. Okay? You don't have that. You don't have that wu in you. It's an insult. They don't get it anymore. Yes, nine. Uh, thank you, Master. Uh, Bursi is a leader of Mars. That's why as soon as we recite the disperse, we can be enlightened right away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wish? Yes, go for us. God, the Koreans cannot be trusted. <laughs> so, so, Master, I agree with Master C, uh, DTT. So, it, you start with the, the words with words, and it helps you uh, get to uh, you have less detachment and get to the markless stage. After that, it's uh, markless. So this 
different stages depends on which level you are. You have Excellent. to start the work. Excellent. Okay, you can stay here. You don't have to go back to China. <laughs> but the other guy goes back to Vietnam and eats his own Vietnamese food. <laughs> Very good. A marvelous a verse with our mark meaning that I give it to you and you should recite and uphold it. And when you do it, uh, it will wipe away accumulated aeons and confusion offenses. Okay? To so do that, and then you understand it's without marks. So it's, there's a timing here. I give you a verse. Recite, uphold it, because it will be good for you. Wipe away all our obstructions, difficulties, and sufferings for you. And eventually, you understand marklessness of those verses. That's what he means. Koreans, do you have a problem with that? No one ever taught you that, huh? That's Mahayana. We start with verse, with, with marks, we teach you things, and eventually you have to drop the things we taught you. Is it clear? Instructions change. Like Jumi, we promised Jumi that when we send her back here, for example, from the Pure Land, he said, oh, you, you know, you have no, don't worry, don't worry. Just go to Saha world, you know, save your husband, okay, and you go back to the Pure Land. And we just don't tell her that it might be a delay. <laughs> Some flights might be canceled. Okay? You cannot be attached. Very good. See? You see the combined wisdom of all you have? You talk and talk and talk. Eventually, your combined wisdom gets it. You are speaking, all of you are speaking Dharma. Isn't that cool? It's your, it's your answer. I simply paraphrase your answers. That's all. JMT. Will you obey Amitabha Buddha now? Master, I think um, it, uh, body, have a body in mind and then save all living beings. I think I'm, I'm not sure whether I can do it. So that's what I'm at. That's why I, I asked. It's easy. And 물론, uh, I, I will send you on vacation to the hells. Okay? So that you appreciate what Amitabha Buddha does for you. Ah, uh, te- I'll do it if Amitabha Buddha said to do it. What? Now she changed her mind. She, she do whatever Amitabha Buddha tells her to. <laughs> Guess what? There's a flight change again. <laughs> Has been moved up. I just heard from Amitabha Buddha. I said, okay, I take her back. <laughs> okay, all right. So all seriousness. You guys are joking too much. Okay. Uh, as soon as the words are spoken, that is certain teaching. Okay, let me tell you. As we're running towards the end of this chapter and this sutra, uh, uh, let me tell you, he's the only patriarch I know that I met. The two men I met in my life that changed my life. 
Master Shenhua is one, and he's number two. Okay? And uh, meeting Master Shenhua, learning from Master Shenhua really opened my eyes to uh, great men. You read about it, you hear about it, you don't see it in person. He's incredible of a man, albeit he's kind of short. Okay? Uh, uh, but the other uh, patriarch, the sixth patriarch, believe it or not, is even shorter. <laughs> he's shorter as he's, uh, Okay? And, and let me tell you, uh, uh, this, is, this is really a, um, a gift that because I was pondering about his teaching for two weeks. I remember I was struggling for two weeks. I couldn't understand what he meant in his teachings. So I, every day I pondered and pondered and pondered. It really bothered me. Because that if the sixth patriarch says so, it must be true. What is the matter with me? How come I don't get it? I simply don't get it. The, the Chinese teaching is very, very abstract. It's not like meat and potatoes like us. Is a black or white, a yes or no, right? The, 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 the Chinese teaching is so, I would say, convoluted, uh, abstract, uh, that's... Uh, let's say, elegant in a very, very, very beautiful way, okay? But for us, Western educated people, it lacks specificity. It lacks specifics. It's not clear to us. Do I drink? Do I not drink? Okay? So, but, but then after two weeks of wandering and wandering and wandering, okay, he appeared and within... Less than two minutes, I say, now thinking more about it, less than one minute taught me and it awakened me to, back then I didn't realize it, but now I realize he taught me using the certain teaching technique that my master, my Chinese master, never did for me. I don't think he has it. Okay? So the sixth patriarch showed me and taught me. Now I'm looking back, and I'm sitting here today, looking, you know, today, and look at my, my place, and look at it, and I said, wow, is that certain teaching? As, as I was preparing for this lecture last night, I said, wow, that's certain teaching, isn't it? What happened to me? And that's why he passed on this Chinese certain teaching thing to the U.S. And I realized that I have this obligation now, this duty now, to pass it on to you. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? Because it's my, it's my hope to be able to pass it on to the person who is qualified to understand it. Not all of you will be able to do it. Okay, so that's why I said maybe in 10 years or so, we can go to the next phase called scary phase, where I give you 10 years to prepare for it. Next 10 years, I hope you come up to speed to the point where I can pass you, pass on to you the certain teaching technology that came from the sick bay truck. It's not Wei Yang. It's not Master Xinhua, it's not Master Wei Shan, it's not my Yang Shan. This is from the sixth patriarch. That's how important it is. So I'm hoping, I pray to the Lord. See, now he's paying attention. So easy. Huh? I pray to the Lord that uh, there will be Dharma vessels. I just lost one. Excuse me? This, this is so trying, trying to speak Dharma to all of you. It's like, you know, there's a Catholic and there's, you know. Anyway, so it is so important because it's not 
when you read about a certain teaching here in this six Petra Sutra, is the theory of it. Okay? But the actual, the actual doing of it is also another aspect that, that is, that is give you the full picture of certain teaching. And why is there? It's fascinating, let me tell you. So I'm, say, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to whet your appetite and tell you so exciting and so, so much more depth about this certain teaching that I think we're going to finish, be finished soon. And I encourage you to go back to this sutra and study it. Okay? Because um, Master Sri no explanation is not focused on certain teaching as my explanation because of my reverence for this great patriarch, the sixth patriarch. And I feel that I need to discern for you the certain teaching contents in his sutra. Okay? But that's not enough. Uh, so that's why I hope that uh, the Chinese-speaking people will help me retranslate the text so that we publish it under our own, of our own sutra and not have to worry about uh, uh, copyright infringement and so forth. Okay? But as a reference for all of you, so that in the future, okay, the people who are qualified will be transmitted the actual certain teaching technique that is helpful. to open your wisdom. What is this? You fired. <laughs> okay, clowns. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time.